Just over a minute to the off, a 15 to 8 long run, 7 to 2 quarter star. The two previous victors of this race holding the front two positions in the market ahead of Burton Port at 15 to 2. And 8 to 1 for Synchronized, who's been pretty well back during the course of the day. The runners continuing to circle in the infield before being called out. Starting point just the other side of the two fences up the home straight. We'll take those three times in all, 22 fences to be taken during the course of this race. Won't be long before they're called out. Last instruction just been given by the starter and a little bit more purpose in the step now. We're preparing to head out. So here we go. And they're off. Petford Cheltenham Gold Cup field are led away by Midnight Chase on the run towards the first of 22 fences. Corto Star very handy with the white face with time for Rupert as they approach. The first, Nakara Bow took it in fourth place. Long run, not the best over the first. And at the rear of the field, likewise, the Midnight Club. As habitual front runner here at Cheltenham, Midnight Chase leads them towards the second with Corto Star. Time for Rupert and uh, the faller. What a friend has come down. What a friend is a faller at fence number two. What a friend out of the contest. Fortunately, he didn't severely impede any of the others. Carruthers, who can often front run, is well back in the field and having to work at this stage. And at the rear of the field, the Midnight Club. Jockey just being attended to. What a friend's rider, Daryl Jacob, on the landing side. The horses are galloping away OK. So meanwhile, on towards the uh, third. Out in front, we have the stripes of Midnight Chase, leading from Corto Star. Time for Rupert is out wider with Nakara Bow. Whiteface of the Giant Bolster in fifth place, over ahead of Long Run. Burtonport races in seventh place. Towards the outside is China Rock, and even wider is Carruthers. Synchronized Whiteface comes next ahead of Weird Al, then Diamond Harry, and the Midnight Club at the rear of the field as they step over the water jump. Once again, the field take it without mishap. Synchronized, however, is just being niggled along, just struggling to lie up in the early stages here as they reach the next at which a good leap by Midnight Chase continues to show the way. In second place, Nakara Bow with Corto Star time for Rupert. Long run right behind them with Burton Port and then the giant bolster as Midnight Chase didn't take that too well. Synchronized is still towards the rear and Burton Port was pushed along for a stride or two on landing there as well. Weird Al is held up towards the rear of the field as they continue to climb towards another open ditch. Midnight Chase over in front from Nakara Bow. Long run for the first time joins Corto Star in third and fourth with time for Rupert sharing that position on the outside as well. The giant bolster from China Rock, Burton Port comes next with Carruthers out wider. Diamond Harry ahead of Weird Al as they take another plain one. And at the rear of the field, there was a slight mistake by the Midnight Club. Again, synchronized ridden and Corto Star is being ridden along and has significantly lost his position. He jumped off prominently, but is now finding himself back in midfield, Corto Star, and is losing ground as Midnight Chase takes the next ahead of time for Rupert. And Corto Star is now towards the back of the field and is dropping out as they, and I think Ruby Walsh may well be pulling Corto Star up. He's anchored him right out the back. And I'm afraid Corto Star, a real national hunt giant, is going to bow out at an early stage in his sixth consecutive Gold Cup as the Midnight Chase leads them over the next. So Midnight Chase leads time for Rupert. Over in third place, China Rock. Long runs rider, Sam Whaley Cohen has a long look round. I think he's trying to ascertain exactly whether Corto Star is still in the race or not. Nakara Bow comes next. From Carruthers, the giant bolster, then Burton Port. Diamond Harry, then Weird Al as they straighten back towards home. So out in front, still with well over a circuit to race, it's Midnight Chase who leads from time for Rupert in second place. China Rock and Long Run are the next two. Nakara Bow took it in fifth place from the Giant Bolster. Burton Port comes next from Carruthers, then Diamond Harry, synchronized, just edging closer. Weird Al always been towards the back of the field as Midnight Chase jumps well over that. And Weird Al was not too clever there, and he is being pushed along towards the rear of the field as well. So Midnight Chase with a circuit to travel in the Betfred 
with Cheltenham Gold Cup. Leads by half a length from in second time for Rupert. Long run well positioned in third ahead of China Rock. The giant bolster comes next from Burton Port. Carruthers has always had to work uh, wide out in about seventh or eighth place uh, behind these Diamond Harry as they make the turn with Weird Al under pressure. Synchronized has always been on the back foot but he's beginning to make a bit of ground. Midnight Chase joined by time for Rupert over that. Long run again a little scruffy in third but not a serious mistake. China Rock comes next from the giant bolster Nakara Bow, Burton Port Carruthers synchronized behind these Diamond Harry. Weird Al's really beginning to struggle and has dropped off the back end is about seven lengths behind the others in company with the Midnight Club. So racing on towards the next Midnight Chase with time for Rupert. Long run the Giant Bolster and China Rock of the front five. Burton Port is over in sixth place ahead of synchronized Nakara Bow. Then Carruthers, Diamond, Harry is racing in about ninth or tenth place as they rise at the next and Midnight Chase and his beloved Cheltenham leads from time for Rupert. Long run has held a perfect position just about throughout as they race towards six from home. China Rocks in fourth place. The Giant Bolster is racing in fifth. Synchronized and Burton Porter sixth and seventh as they soar over that. And out in front, time for Rupert sharing the lead with Midnight Chase. Long run in China Rock. Burton Court edging closer with the Giant Bolster and synchronized. And these seven have broken away. The race towards the fence at the top of the hill. And it's very tight there, Midnight Chase. Long run almost jumped into the back of him as the leading bunch just begin to group up as they now make the turn. Racing then towards Towards the fourth last now in front time for Rupert it is who leads the turn time for Rupert on the outside of Midnight Chase China Rock then long run Burton Port then the giant bolster and synchronized continuing to work himself into the race the Carabo is in eighth Midnight Chase has given way and time for Rupert leads the descent down towards the third last the giant bolster long run on the right with the nose band Burton Port is stable companion China Rock and synchronized towards the outside time for Rupert is still out in front as they make the turn back towards home from the giant bolster. Long run just held in a pocket as Burton Port tries to improve on the outside. Synchronized once again is just found wanting for pace and turning for home out in front. It is time for Rupert. The giant bolster Burton Port and long run now threatened to throw down challenges. Synchronized is staying on for pressure. Two from home. The giant bolster moves to the lead in the gold cup from time for Rupert. Long run Burton Port can't go on and down to towards the last it's the giant bolster who leads synchronized is coming home strongly with the white face for tony mckay and long run jumps alongside as well synchronized who has flat to the boards early has fought his way to the front long run battling on the far side the giant bolster but it's synchronized who's come right from the back of the field to win a dramatic bet for cheltenham gold cup synchronized for ap mccoy john joe o'neill and jp mcmanus won the gold cup the giant bolster, a mighty run in second. Long run, Burton Port, time for Rupert. Nakara Bow, Midnight Chase, China Rock behind these, the Midnight Club and Carruthers. Yeah, he's had just a few moments to reflect on synchronised success in the Betfred Cheltenham Gold Cup. We were just saying, AP, he's, he's not the biggest, but his heart's in the right place. Yeah, that's basically the, the long and the short of it is he doesn't look like, the, like a chaser, he doesn't look like a Gold Cup horse, but uh, a lot of people have told me in the past that looks aren't everything and looks don't win races. Lucky for me, that's the case. But yeah, he's got an amazing heart, got a great will to win, and uh, that's the reason why he won a Gold Cup, you know. And there was a school of thought before the Lexus chase that this horse needed deep ground, and he proved in Lep Leperstown that that wasn't the case, and again today. Yeah, look, I, I actually don't think he's ever been a slow horse. He's just, he just takes him a little while to get warmed up, and sometimes in races he can't... I think even today he was really, really struggling to, to hang on to the back of them, but I, I kind of knew going out sort of in the last circuit that he was actually close enough, and if I could keep him there, that, that no horse would could come home. 
uh, as well as him. As I said, it's just about keeping him in a close enough position without sort of disappointing him too much, you know. You were obviously in a position to see what was unfolding in front of you. To see Ruby pulling up Corto Star at an early stage. Yeah, you know, I, I knew that Ruby had come back uh, at the top of the hill. I seen he was going backwards. I actually did say to him, yeah, I said, you, you know, you're going to be pulling him up, and I knew he wasn't going to win the Gold Cup. And, and obviously, you know, Ruby knows better than anyone else. He's been an amazing horse, and um, you know, he's been the horse, probably the best horse that we've ever seen. You know, and. and we don't want it to happen to any horse, but we certainly wouldn't like it to happen to Cotwell Star. And I'm sure that uh, Ruby's thoughts were, were, were more with Cotwell Star to make sure he was he was okay, um, most and foremost, you know. So if he synchronised himself, it hasn't been straightforward getting here because he's had a setback along the way and he had to miss a race in February. Yeah, but he missed the race in February because John Joe just wasn't happy for him with him, and he just said to to, to JP, look. If we want to have a go at the Cold Cup, we can't be going to Ireland. And believe it or not, just in the last 10 days, John Joe has just kept getting a little bit more bullish each day. He just was getting a little bit more positive. And for the last week, he was telling me this horse is really coming, he said, you know. So he said if he's ever going to run a big race, he said he's in the right condition to do so, you know. So he's an amazing trainer to get horses to peak for, for, for the meeting like this, you know. You know, we have lots of moderate winners and we don't, you know, people say we don't have enough winners, but if you give him the ammunition, like, he can't half produce them, you know. It's been a frustrating week up until now, up until today, certainly. Alberta's run going close yesterday. Now, you've been here before, you've ridden Gold Cup winners, you know what it's like, but is it extra special to get one in the bag for John Joe and for JP? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. You know, look, it's Cheltenham. You're, you've no divine right to win here, and you just got to keep believing it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I, a few things, you know, a few seconds during the week, and... But I didn't have a lot of really. I didn't have many. I didn't have any short price favourites. I had a few chances along the way, and you just got to keep going out there and keep hoping that you're going to, you know, you're going to hit the target, you know. So, um, but it is. It's it's nice to 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 win a Gold Cup for 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 John Joe. Look, he's an amazing man. He's great fun to ride for. You just do what you like, and you know he's he's the easiest man in the world to ride for. And JP is the greatest enthusiast. You know, obviously he loves Cheltenham. He loves winning the Gold Cup. But he rings me in a Monday morning. You know going through horses that god forbid not many people would even want to talk about them you know what i mean and he's you know his horses are believe it or not his life and uh racing is very lucky to have someone with as much enthusiasm for the game as what he has you know and from your point of view is this extra special today because there was the taunton fall there was the heavy fall from darlan at newbury last month yeah look that, that happens that's part of life has been a jump jockey you just gotta keep you know i i I, don't, I, I, I obviously respect a lot of people's opinions and I listen to people and I take advice from people but you've got to believe in you, you know you've got to just keep going forward and don't look back and whatever happens you can't go out as a jump jockey and not think you're going to get smashed at some point off the ground you know what I mean that's just life so you just carry on hope you get back up and, and look forward I'm not really whatever's happened in the past has been great but Everyone wants to know what's going to win the Grand Union there, really, don't they? <laughs> Fantastic ride. Many congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, David.